Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to another stream. Um, and obviously today we're continuing the XT0. So that's a double dragon and tri zero combo. So we'll just um, go over to this one for a second, just so we can introduce the stream. Wait for a few people to turn up. So. And Richard's here. Okay. Um, so we've got a few things to talk about that I've received. There's Killer Prince too. Good morning. Um, a few items I've received. A few. Um, so as I said in the previous stream, I wasn't 100% sure that I'd got all of the drop nuts in the right place as it turns out i didn't um and i also had to change some stuff so i'll talk about that in a second um and i also perhaps got a slight have to rethink my original plan how i was going to lay out some of the electronics so <clears throat> let's talk about first of all a couple of bits that i've received so i'll just switch over to the um so i had spoken to um jason at ldo um and talked about what i was going to do with this project and um if there was any way that ldo wanted to get involved so what i asked for was basically just the four nema 14 motors that we're going to need in the back um and then also the two orbiter v2 extruders so i then got this box delivered a couple of days ago um and jason was kind enough to actually send i to get it in the picture um so we've got here this is one of the boxes and it's um the entire 0.2 motor kit so obviously we're going to have a couple of leftovers from these but i've got two sets of these so that's our four NEMA 14 motors um and i actually have a, already have a plan to use the um the round uh, extruder motors that are also come in this kit for another project so they're going to get used um and I also received the two Orbiter 2 extruders. Um, and then what I wasn't expecting to get is actually the filament runout sensor add on for the Orbiter 2. So, basically, what you see here, I've got again, so everything we need for the IDEX part of this kit, for this build. So big thank you to Jason at LDO for sending these over. Um, hopefully in the next week or so, I will have another delivery from uh, another company that's helping out with the builds, which I'll talk about when that arrives. But that then should sort out um, our tool head situation. So we'll, hopefully that will be here in the next week or so. So yeah, really grateful to Jason for sending those over. So that was the first thing we needed to talk about. Uh, let me just focus. Okay. Um, so yeah, what I was saying about the no drop nuts. So I did miss a couple. Um, and that's basically because one, I didn't really look at the documentation well enough to see where things needed to be. Um, so I did miss a couple, but what so the the little drop nut prints that I was using if I can I'm not gonna about to show you on camera because it's too could be very small. Um hello Ella, nice to see you. So let me find one on here. So you can basically print these. So they're really tiny. Obviously they're fifteen beans. Um but you can print the ones that have got like the little um 
tab at the top. I suppose that helps um, align the nut in the extrusion because it, it sits a little bit um, just, just lower than the surface, but it's actually in the groove. Now that caused some problems, or it will cause some problems later, because some of the parts that we're going to be using have got, um, let me zoom in so you can see better. I've got like the um, little tabs to help align into the extrusion groove. But the problem was the ones, the drop nuts that I was using actually prevented you having them in. This wouldn't sit in the extrusion properly. Um, so what I've basically had to do is. For some reason my camera won't. Um, autofocus, so I have to adjust it every time. So, what I had to basically do is all of the drop nuts that you can see in that lower extrusion all had to be changed because they're all the ones that are attaching um, the additional drives, the additional. Um, I don't know what you these would be. I think these are the ones that actually control the y-axis. So yeah, so I basically had to take some of the extrusions apart to, to change all of those drop nuts. That was the first thing I had to do. I then realized um, that some parts had to be fitted before it was put together. So if I, I can actually see it there. So here you can see I've got some bearing printed parts um, and basically that needed to be fitted first because the parts um, actually rode in the groove rather than sit in the groove and then you, you attach them so again had to take some of the frame apart to put those in um, what else so also here we've got this um, rail stock that won't be able to stay there on both sides. I've put, I've you've probably seen in the background, I've put a few things together um, and we'll put some more stuff together in a minute. It, I did that so that I could mock things up a bit. Uh, do you have a CAD model to go from as reference? So I have the CAD model for Tri Zero and Double Dragon separate. But obviously, because I'm combining the two, um, as well as so I'm, I'm probably going about this very the wrong way because I'm also using some modif modified parts of each of those models, um, and, and the hope that things work when I get there. So I think if I haven't said this in the last part, I'll say it now. There's a very real risk that this is not going to work because there's some things that maybe aren't going to align properly. Um, it, everything should be okay because because Tri Zero and Double Dragon are made by the same person. They do say that they are compatible. So the only issue will be because I'm using slightly modified versions of some parts that they might not be compatible. So like, for example, the bed mount, I'm using, um, I forget what these are called. Are they GE5 bearings? Um, I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Do, yeah, you can certainly do. So basically, because this, what this is going to do, so basically, this is a one modified part. So this uses the same, I can't remember what they're called, but they're the same type of bearings that are in a trident um, bed corners. So that's a modified part, and I'm not entirely sure if they will work with everything else. So it's, yeah, sort of, we're gonna see if everything works when we get there. GE5, yeah. Um, so 
I also, so one of the things I built was also the the end stop. Now I haven't got the proper um, thing to go in the top here, so I've just used bolt. Um, totally not in focus. So we're gonna have to try and hit that with the nozzle, but this might not actually fit. Because the person who designed this, who also designed this, but didn't necessarily design it for this version. So it's all a bit hope and see. But yeah, we'll see how we get on. Um, let's just go back to Richard's question. Could you do a 240 by 120 bed? Yeah. So because I've also, I had to order... I've ordered a new heater for the bed that I've got because because we're basically going to be mounting the bed the other way round. Whereas no, on a normal V zero, you have two mounting points at the back and one at the front. From the old bed would be long enough. A um, bit of modelling would work. Well, wouldn't go amiss if you had to, I suppose. Yeah. So I have modified a few bits, none of the major parts, um, but this is going to sort of be a build it and see if anything needs changing and then change it basically. Um, so Richard's question, can you use a 240 by 120 bed? Yeah, you can totally do that. Um, basically it's going to look really odd with a the normal v0 size bed um but what that will do is give us plenty of space either side for the tool heads um so yeah you can use a bigger bed the only problem is there's not many uh, so if you look on aliexpress there is a i think it's a 240 by 120 bed or slightly very slightly different than that which is the aluminium bed made for a double dragon but then it's particularly hard to get a heater to fit that unless you go to Nevo and or Canovo or whoever it is and get either one that's specially made or one that's very slightly not quite the right size um but, we, but to start with I'm going to stick with the 120 by 120 um that, and we'll just see if it works so let me make a bit more space and we'll try and actually build some stuff. So I've already built um, the A drive. Let me move the frame out of the way. So I've built the A drive and then the corresponding um, additional drive um and then i've also move out of the way i've also then made up these which are again like modified part and these are what will um root the belts to under the front extrusions so i've built those so what we'll do today is build these drives um and then we'll just start putting a few things on um one thing actually before i forget one thing i do need to work out what i'm going to do bring this back i worked out when i was sort of mock putting these on and seeing how they fit but i'm gonna have to put the mid panel in before i actually assemble these parts onto the frame so Whatever I do today, as in just mounting these drives to have a look, will have to come off, then put the mid panel in. Um, now, I'm going to probably laser cut that myself. Now, I haven't decided if I want to do it in red or black acrylic or another material that I can laser. Um, the red I've got is a little bit dark. And it doesn't really match these, so I need to either go black, get some more, or red and get some more. So 
that's a decision to make. And then another thing that has probably changed my plan slightly is that what I wanted to do is have kind of a inverted electronics option. So the plan was to have the control board and the Raspberry Pi in, in the deck, under the deck, and have the power supply on the back. Now the problem is, move this out of the way again, now that I've got the motors in from LDO, these are quite long. So I don't think there's going to be space on the back for the normal uh, LRS 350 power supply. So I'm either going to have to change the plan, put the power supply in the bottom as normal, which I don't really want to do. I want to sort of have the electronics under the deck as like a feature. Or I'm going to have to get one of those smaller power supplies, like the narrow ones. Um, is it a U, USP or UPS or something like that? Or not a, not a, not the normal UPS, but you know what I mean. A smaller version. Um, so that's again something we'll get to later on that may need changing for the future. If I was me, I would have. Done the PSU in the base, then MCU at the rear, keep voltage separation so the center of gravity there. Possibly U H yeah, that's it, UHP. Um I think because we're gonna have yeah, UHP because we're gonna have three stepper motors in the base. I don't think we're going to have too much weight on the back. Well, we obviously will have weight on the back because these are going to be on there as well. But I don't think we'd have so much that it... Um, yeah, but it... Bit of a lag, but don't worry. Um, so, yeah, it, it it's one of those things that we're going to have to look at when we get there and decide if things are going to work. So let's actually build something. So I'm going to need to get that box of drives out again. Get the two. One thing I do like actually about the the LDO kits, they give you these little um, labels you can put on. Motor wires. Obviously, that's not hugely helpful to me because of what we're building, but. Thought that was quite good that they were included. So let's get some motors out. If anyone's got any ideas what we can do with what will be three now. If I was building like um a micron or something, we could use the three integrated lead screws for more dry bed stuff, but We'll have to find something to do with them. Finding my own machine at the moment based on fine aesthetic dual brain Satsuma. Yeah. I think I saw you post about that in uh, Vector 3D's server. I think because he did the I want to call it the tic tac but I'm not I think that's right. That's the the small rat rig Minion, isn't it? Um, I'm not. I don't think he's the same person who did the small Prusas, but I like them as well. I think they're pretty cool. So let's do the B drive first. I've got my manual up on the screen just so that I can refer to that. So let's that up. So I've done. Um, all of the inserts as well, just because it's not something see me do. So you don't need you don't need to see me basically doing inserts. So I've done all of them off offline. Um, I had to reprint a couple of things, but I'll talk about that when we get there. Yeah, it's just a matter of building things basically today. Sort of putting some things on to see what they look like. 
going to use the Mark 3 slash 4 bed. Nice. Yeah. I'll have to. So you say you're on sewer brain system. Yeah, I'll have to have a look and see if I can find that and see what people are saying about your. Or see what you're saying about your machine. Right. So we need to put the. I know it's an odd color combination, but I purple and red are actually my favorite colors, so I thought that's why I've done it. But it's a bit of an odd combination, but I like it. So, that just not look in focus. Uh, I've got most of the screws out. Oh, that—that that was another thing I'm having a little bit of an issue with at the moment is um, having the screws that I need. I thought that I would have everything from spares of two other V zeros and just stuff I had, but the problem is some of these um, modifications don't use, from what I can tell. V0 or screws from the V0 bomb, which means I need a couple of odd screws that I need that I haven't got in the style that I want. But we'll come to that at another time. So that's 35. And I think this one is as well. Yep. So we need to take this part and these go in the top. There's so much spare weight on the shipment. Thing is, I didn't really know until I started building this. Um, I I made the assumption that I had what I needed, and it turns out I didn't have what I needed. So, so these are some of the um barons that I've got. So I have. There should hopefully be now some links in the description of some of the parts I've bought. Um, for some reason, some of the parts that I've ordered, I can't put a, an affiliate link on. So what I'm going to do is put those in a separate, got to put them in the description because an affiliate link doesn't really mean a lot, not earning a lot from them. So I just want to put that link in there so that you can buy stuff. And that was basically the four port, 4.3 inch touchscreen which was like 17 pounds and it works really well I've already tested it and it works um, and the other thing was some fans so they didn't seem to work so I had to I will have to um, yeah yep. um, sort out another link for those Access. Right. So this is a little bit tricky because sometimes these screws like fall out of the part do this one some of these washes out or shims or whatever they're supposed to be called So, like I say, I'm going off the manual, so to know what I'm doing here. Just download the manual or watch a previous build stream of mine where I've
this is basically just these bearings are for the belt pass so a lot of you are watching no other side has a printer spacer these are actually the spacers off the printer that i disassembled to build this one because that was also had the same purple filament so i thought i might as well use the same um parts rather than print new ones about one of the only parts that has been A lot of the inserts actually were reused too because I metaled them out of the parts and reused them. Have to then try and put this piece up at sort of the same time as. Make sure everything doesn't fall off. Then fold. Okay. And what I'm going to do is temporarily put two nuts on. So that this part that should keep that part together for the the moment. Some thirty millimeter screws in. Good on here. I think that one. Yep. Go through to the inserts that are recessed at the bottom of the part. So we have one that's flush. Two that are recessed. That one, that one. That was a little bit of a pain to get started. Yeah. Essentially, a piece of filament. Let's take this out because what we don't want to do is cross thread our brass. That. I want to force these going. Take your time. Next step will be put fully to our stepper. 
Yeah, so this is going in a lot better. Cool. Okay. Won't do that too tight just now. So I've got yeah. So I've got one of the parts little um spacer gap part previous zero build. Take one of these, one of these 22s, please. And we'll put some Loctite grub screws. Not too much. And then this is like the glue stick version of the Loctite rather than the the liquid which I prefer the this one this style is what I prefer rather than the liquid yeah you don't need an awful lot just a little bit rounds of around the threads basically We'll just off the excess. So, what has everyone else been up to the last couple of weeks, or since you've last, since since we've last spoke? Have you made any progress with your pick and place machine? Yeah, so this is, I don't know if they call it, I don't know if it's a different um, number or anything, but it's Loctite 248. I think this one came from, got this from the local Halford. And that's, that's lasted quite a long time, so. Yeah, so what we need to do. Um, just get this started with one of the grub screws on the flat. Others saying she's recovered from bronchitis. Both my business to work. Apart from the bronchitis, I'm pretty much identical. <laughs> Although I would never say that I had a business as such. Right, so that's just on there enough so that it doesn't spin um, and it goes up and down. So what we then need to do is find with the mark, the B mark to orientate it. So basically we then use this little spacer to find the gap. So uh, yeah, we just get that roughly where it needs to be because you may need to slightly adjust this um, once it's in the actual housing. But you're sort of trying to get it roughly where it needs to be. Pointing this one up too. Um, then we're going to need so this these remaining screws I have be all thirty fives. Yep. Also need some more. Then we want so we put this on. Right place. So we want this wire to basically come out uh, where the threaded is. That will just sit on there basically. What I do, I put a couple in. Help. 
line it up. Get those started. Don't tighten these down because these are what um, will allow us to adjust the belt tension later on. So we'll just basically put them sort of a little bit more than finger tight. We can do the other two a little bit easier because we know everything is lined up. Make sure we've, um, and then what we need to sort of check is that um, fully lines up with the top bearings. It does that should be good? Put the put it will screw on. Now, before I put those on, I'm now going to build um, other motor drive. So again, so some, I this I would imagine this is basically these that have been modified um, to do what they needed to do for the additional belt. Just got um, little posts there that need bearing on uh, so I need to back our bearings out whoops tangled up with the microphone so So Richard's having internet problems. That might make it better for all I know, Richard. So we can all the So what I'm gonna do is just bring this one over I've already done so I can see what I'm supposed to be doing. So I've already got the hardware out for that as well. So we need to put the little thing in, the adjuster. Actually, that's, yeah. So then I need to work out which screw I need. Washer bolt, yep. then our two bearings, and this will go um, into where the post is, lower printed part. Cool, tighten that up just a little, just so it's 
in, it won't come out. That. Then we can put in some additional screws as well. To these other black ones. One. Yeah. Yeah, not you don't want to tighten them up too much just yet. Enough to keep things together. Then we'll prepare the motor for this one. So this time, so we haven't really got um spaces to so we just just do it by eye basically. So again we want to put some Loctite on our rough screws. Normally two in each pulley. Okay, and we'll wipe off the excess. Oh. Then this one goes, um, check that, probably should. Right. What I've done this one wrong. Right place. So this one needs to go way up. Sort of visually look at the other one and see roughly where it was. About there, but we will adjust it in the housing if we need to. So again, this one goes with the motor coming out uh, of where the thing is. What we're going to do here is have more washers, and so these are some of the bolts that I've had to use. Have more black ones. Okay. Put two in and do the same as what we did. I can do it without dropping it. Okay. So yeah. So these ones are just 
slightly different, but they still all work, still all do the same thing. So. Once we've built these, we should now be able to put some things on the frame, even if it's just um, day for a visual purpose, so that I can then decide what I'm going to do with the deck, uh, the mid panel. At least we'll have some things on the machine so we can see what it looks like. So. So that's those made. So if we go back to the zero manual. Now we're going to basically fit our A and B drives. So or 35 mil have over here. Five. About four for each side. These are for the so these in this setup, the double dragon setup, these will be used to control the tool heads um, along the X axis. So, we should hopefully have the drop nuts in place where we need them. So, get some of the drop nuts. Them. So that so if we get grab one of these, what we do? So our B drive, and this base is going to sit. Um, so this is where we have to remember to take nuts off that we added earlier. These were basically helping everything stay together. Now we're actually going to be screwing what we need and move those. So, one this back screw goes into the extrusion. The next one along goes into so that's easy. Must be the right. What we'll also have to do is make sure we've got the other nut in place. So it's a bit of a case of just trying to get things to line up and be a little bit fit. We get this one. Wait. Easy. black drop nut and the actual nut 
they're already um, on a black frame. That seems like that. Okay. I want to do those two tight again. I want to have a little bit of movement. So those two screws are ones into the top of the frame here, ones into the top nut here. We then have two more that we need to get in, one into this hole into a drop nut. Needs to go a little bit further forward, I think. Realize where that actually is. What we might have to do is just take this out again. those three up and let's try and get this one lined up too okay luckily this one is a bit more loose looks like we've managed to get it first time on that one now tighten all these down. Yeah, not want to really crank these down just enough to Hold them in place basically that's one side done so i think what we'll do is um now try and put in we'll do all of this side first and then go on the other side put these over here so i think what we do if we lay this on the front I think the best way of doing this might be so what we need to do is basically get um I have to try and work out what I'm doing here. This is going to go 
here. This will have um, nuts that we need to line up, and I need to find out what size bolt I need. and have a look see yeah I think that might work so these are uh, 25 I believe yep fives started And we'll have to line up all of these drop nuts as well. Holes. Start with three and see if get on. I don't know how many I have of that. So Try and work out what the best way to position this is. I should have, yeah, I've got a drop nut here. Goes this hole. That does need to pop. One um one on the bottom as well. of these along Best way to actually line things up easy. What I'd be able to do is just lay this on, line up. Probably should have used red filament for these drop nuts so they were actually a bit more visible i don't know if that would have helped but
So, hopefully, um, I should have um, some hot ends from Fatus on the way. Um, and I'm going for, I think, um, I think they refer to it as the well, it's Fatus X Voron. So it's the, the Voron version of the dragon. The best way to describe it. Um, so they should be because we're going for aesthetics and all that, they are actually red, they should look pretty cool. Um, and they're going in Dragon Burner, full heads. Trying. So we've got a bit more. Um, that one's not quite in the right place. Dragon is the crazy dragon. Does that use some sort of um, different heat break from the the, the NF crazy? I assume. Let's see. Would have been a lot easier to build not on stream is what i'm gonna say <laughs> but we can i can share the experience with you lot then hello in a box i flow God damn it. So it doesn't something's moved slightly. I suspect I'll have to take some of this apart when I come to run the belts because I think it's going to be near impossible to get the belt in 
from everywhere. Um, with everything in place. That's that part. Good. Then we would have I'm right in assuming that they go get my volcano yeah always have sort of parts of stuff laying around don't we Would be so. This will now basically go here, or how close to that it goes just yet. Let's have a look, see what size this. as well so. only what the fine definitely gonna have to order some twenty five Twenty fives as well. Just put a couple in here for now. Okay. Again, we need to get some drop nut place this back back extrusion is basically full of drop nuts so many needed hold this Turn this. Yep, yeah, maybe it won't be able to, but got it in there. We can.
that is basically how that is meant to look. I think I'm not entirely sure. That I should just. I don't think it's that right up against it's meant to be a little bit of a gap. But there. See what I mean about having to um Put the mid panel in before all of this stuff goes in purely because the bearings at this end actually stick out a little bit so you wouldn't better slide the panel in so these will go in for now just so i can show you what this is going to look like I think you're right, Ella, about having to have weight in the front because this is already with just two um, steppers is quite heavy. So I think it might be easier to put the other parts of this in before this top one. That looks like it's probably the smarter way to go. So let's try and get those in. Yeah. I can find another twenty five in a minute just so I can mock things up. Although I still do like still do want to put the electronics in the front or under the front. So under the deck, so I'll have to have to play around with it and see. I think once I got these, get these on, I'll probably change my mind because the weight to be lined up. Little bit loose and
definitely fiddly. Not an easy way of doing it. Now. Next as well. Definitely good after all those. Put this one in there temporarily. Then after the Easter weekend, I'll order some more hardware. Yeah, there's certainly not a lot of room Making this very easy for myself or for you, but that up, mate. Oh. 
but one sock. Cool, I've got it. That's fine. Okay, thanks Richard for coming along. Speak to you soon. Okay. Yeah, that is really heavy at the back. We've got to put one one more motor set on there. So I think we're definitely gonna need weight up the front. So let's get this on and we'll see what's what. This is this is going to be very. Uh, I think complicated when it comes to when we have to do the um, belts and everything. But We'll try and just so okay. visualize those.
those ones you Twenty four seven print. Yeah, but like like you were saying, this there's so so much weight now on the back. It does look pretty cool. Very very mad have so many motors at the back um it's gonna be a, a belting nightmare but it does look pretty cool so i wanted to also try and get um some of the z-axis parts on which I guess is going to mean the lower skirts because we have motors obviously mounted in the lower skirts. I'm trying to think. That is worth doing. So we've got this part, which is um, part of the z-axis, and that goes on. Yeah. Should hopefully line up with the part that goes on the back of the motor. Back of the bed, I should. Yeah, so let's have a look. Doing some feet. That will give us a better idea of um, sort of what it's going to look like, stance wise. I will attach the motors, but I won't actually um, put pulleys in there. Not. This is all going to have to come off. I'm pretty. Pretty confident of that now, so in fact, we might just click them in place because they do click in quite well. This will be this side. Side. You know, quite look. Get this on a little bit just to have see what it looks like. Take this, let's take the motors out actually for the moment. I have no idea what I screw this.
get some of this put together so we can see what it looks like and then I can make some decisions on um make some Do the rear skirt while I'm here as well, I guess. Camera off. So yeah, so this um. Rear skirt has got some stone jacks holes. Not entirely for sure if I will use them yet, but we'll have them if we need them. This doesn't have quite work. Okay. So these skirts are actually um, for the Tri Zero, made by one of the people linked in the description. So not made for the size of Double Dragon. So I've I haven't printed them yet, but I've got some um, like fill or. It, obviously the the depth is the same as the tri zero and the v zero but it's the length the yeah the width of the front um so I've got a filler piece that I will need to print put in there but I haven't done that yet just so I can see where things are gonna go basically So let's um, flip this over carefully. Same again, the 
other side skirt. Again, we'll take that out. So, <coughs> excuse me. One that goes on the front. So this is going to have, um, like I said earlier, the, the 4.3 inch touchscreen. So this will have, um, again, width is different to what these skirts are designed for. So this will have some filler, filler parts put in. doesn't want to quite go in And this does also have um, feet to go on the bottom, which I've had to um, model up a little piece for, which I'll show you later. So this, the other rear skirt has the power inlet built in. So on here.
I can show you the parts for the feet. So these are, try and stand this up at least. Skirts. Better of idea of what it looks like, of what it will look like. So, it will then obviously be raised up a little bit as well. Have the feet. So, the feet have um, like a bottom plate, have a nut, a captured nut in. Feet, I think we're in this box. So then gonna put these feet on the bottom. So it'll go foot, plate, that will attach to the bottom of the skirt. Yeah. Looking and we can actually back. You can see this is how much wider we are, double dragon. So again, there'll be a um, feather piece going in here. But yeah, so there just wouldn't have be enough. I don't got the power supply here. So this is where I wanted to put the power supply. It just won't it won't physically fit. So that's not going to be able to go there anymore unless I get the smaller power supply or the smaller in dimension, say, rather than. Yeah, that's a pretty big, big zero. So, yeah, that's not going to fit, unfortunately. But I perhaps I'm also on the dilemma that because these motors are slightly bigger that not even the control board will fit. Um, but that's why I might have to have a smaller power supply in the back, control board under the front. Because I'm not even sure if the control board will fit. The original plan was to have, um, well, I've gone through a few different ideas, but it was gonna have a spider uh, two, a version 2.3 spider because I've got one laying around um, which would have had the capacity for the motor all the motors that we need but I'm Richard is actually sending me a uh, a mellow super 8 so what I'm gonna have to do is wait for that to arrive to even see if that would fit here because if that won't fit here anyway, then I can just go for that smaller power supply. Um, so yeah, so this is why this sort of this build is not um, off the off the manual build where we can just start to finish go through. I have to sort of build parts of it, wait for other parts to arrive to see if they actually fit. So, yeah, not sure if there's much more I can do today, thinking, my board, keep wiring easy, yeah, well the, the GitHub says if you're using, let me, actually I've got it open so I might as well read directly what it Motors, so two M4 Y drive. You're using full length, so 48 millimeter plus. Now these, I believe, are 52 millimeters. So these are 
even bigger, I'd I do prefer backpacks with control board. So you mean like um either on the side or a whole extra piece. So the manual says 48 millimeter plus motors, not because it will not fit with the provided mount, but a spider will. So I'm not sure how different in size spider is to Super 8. So it, it is really going to have to be a case of waiting for stuff to arrive before I can say if it will fit or not. Oh, just a rear mounted MP. See, I really I like the inverted electronics on the Trident. Although I suppose they were always going to be in the bottom anyway. It's just the fact that we can access them from the top. But my idea was to have the electronics in the in the deck, and then have a clear deck panel so that you can actually see the electronics. Um yeah but that so i am going to have to wait i think until i get that um um control board to see if it fits or not Oops. yeah is it it's purely a aesthetic reason to have it under the deck. Um, like you say, in terms of easier wiring, hell of a lot better with it at the back, because otherwise I've got to route all these motor wires, which I, I mean that one will be, but I mean technically the wires might actually be long enough to reach the bottom. Uh, I mean it's not to any but I mean yeah true thinking if there is anything to I think what I'm gonna need to do is wait for those to be delivered order some new screws anyway um what I'm going to do yeah so basically I'm going to have to wait for things to arrive before I can decide what I'm going to do um is there anything in here I can so I did actually print the v0 display case so I was going to use the v0 display it just looks tiny on the front but because I'm now going to use the touch screen Obviously, you've got a different mount that will go on the front. I think that will look a lot better. Um, because what I also wanted to do on the back was to use um, proper DIN rail rather than either the printed DIN rail or um, VHB tape, just because I like. Do prefer the rail mounts. Show you these briefly. So these, so the original Double Dragon info on um, Git on the GitHub has T zero on the right, which doesn't to me doesn't make sense because I've used other. Isaac's machines in the past, which has T0 on the left. I think that's commonly how it's treated. It's also on the GitHub has the um, the X axis mount for mini, no, for mini afterburner. But someone has modified the mount for the V. For the V0.2 full head, therefore the um, dragon burner, etc. But what they've done is actually made different versions of the of the mount to have 
end stops on each side as well as how the belt mounts because the belt mounting is the important part when it comes to which uh which motor will be controlling which so you can see here that these obviously only you only capture the belt on one tool head that the rest of the belt can can be moved independently so these have if we look here these have end stop switches on either end but you can use any i printed them all because i didn't know which one was going to be the one i wanted so i printed them all but the base set gives me the combination of any or any combination i want so that'll be something we have to work out um when we get to that stage which what thing is mounted to what basically um but yeah um i think we're gonna have to leave it there for today oh i'll show you one more thing actually in a minute um so i'm gonna ha i'm gonna have to wait for things to arrive but i thought this was <laughs> so i spoke about in in the first part so I wasn't, so I haven't preloaded any nuts for panel clips because I don't really like the boron panel clips. And on my Trident, I put annex panel clips. And so someone modified them to fit on the V0. And this is just the cutest little panel clip you've ever seen. Tiny. So that is like an, an annex style panel clip. So yeah, we'll be using those to attach. Chances are this is only going to be um, a PLA printing IDEX machine. So I'm not going to not going to be fully enclosed. Those are great. Yeah, annex clips are nice. Yeah, I really like them. I think they're just so much simpler and easier to use um so really this is only going to have um panels on the side the mid panel deck and we may have um a lift off door i haven't decided yet i did actually get all i did get enough um 300 mil extrusions to make a extrusion top hat um but i haven't decided if i'm going to do it. um yeah i think really that's as far as i can get today without other stuff here and what i may do oh, i've got to order the hardware so what i will do is order hardware and then next stream which might not be next weekend if i'm still waiting for stuff but the next stream that we do do, I will have this back to where it is now, but with all of the hardware, um, etc. So it's ready to go from this point. Um, I should also say that the, the A and B motors also both have um, spots for end stops. So technically we should be able to, because each side of the gantry is going to be controlled independently. You're about to home one side and then home the other. I'm hoping that should be possible. So that would be quite cool as well. Yeah, I think we're going to be done for today. Thank you everyone for coming along. For everyone speaking, or mostly Ellie and Richard in the, com in the chat. Thank you for those. Um, Ella Prince was here earlier and then. Apologies if I've missed any other messages. But yeah, um, I think we'll probably call it a day there. So thanks for coming. Um, drop a like, drop a subscribe, all those things. So I'll put you on the screen. And I can still hopefully talk to you. So yeah, thanks for coming along and I will see you next time.